Okay, so I'll start with um, indices, and I'll start with the indices law. Um, for this whole chapter, there is no new content introduced. This is all uh, the same from GCSE. Um, so, uh, yes, yeah, so there's no new content introduced. So I'll start with the indices law. I've kind of made kind of six laws. I've kind of grouped, that's how I've grouped them all together, um, which might be a bit easier to remember. So first of all, the most basic one is that A, B times a c they have to be the same base and b and c are numbers but they have to be the same base is equal to a b plus c so to put that into number form 2 to the power of 2 times 2 to the power of 3 is equal to 2 to the power of 2 plus 3 which is equal to 2 to the power of 5 it's really important that these two numbers the 2 has to be the same the base has to be the same, otherwise this doesn't apply. Very similar, a to the power of b divided by a to the c is equal to, firstly, it's also equal to a to the b over a to the c. Um, this is what this means, the, the divide sign by the fraction. I know some people um, get a bit confused by that. Um, those two are the same thing. Both of those are equal to a to the power of b minus c. So what's important about this is the order does matter. For this, it could be a to the power of c times a to the b it equals this. But for this, if it was the other way around, it would be a c minus b. So the order matters for this. Um, so to put this into number form again, if you did 3 to the power of 3 over 3, it's equal to 3 to the power of 3 minus 1, which is equal to 3 to the power of 2. Um, remember that there is actually a 1 here. Um, technically, we don't write it, so that's why there's the 1 there. Okay, so it's very important, again, that the bases have to be the same, otherwise the indices law don't, um, doesn't work. Um, a common mistake I used to make all the time when I started off with um, this topic is so if we take 2 to the power of 2 times 2 to the power of 3. I was so used to that um, multiplication symbol that for some reason I used to do 4 to the power of 2 plus 3. I used to times the 2s together. Uh, please don't do that. It's a really stupid mistake to make, and it will, um, it, it, yeah, it's, hopefully no one else is as stupid as that. Um... Okay, the third base law is that a to the power of b to the power of c is equal to a to the power of b times c, which hence is equal to a, b, c, as they mean the same thing. So you times them together in that instance when it's to the power of. So to put that into um, number form, 5 to the power of 3 to the power of 2 is equal to 5 to the power of 3 times 2 which is equal to 5 to the power of 6 you times them together because it's to the power of this one you are putting this whole thing to the power um, another thing as well and um, this doesn't really so point so much apply to numbers but if you have two terms so for example a b and you both raise them to the power um, it's going to be a to the power of c, b to the power of c. So if you were going to, this is quite useful for algebra. So if it was x y to the power of c, it would be x c y to the c. You both, um, you, um, they both of these uh, to the power of c. And obviously, just in case, this is equal to x to the c times y to the c. This is what this is actually saying. Okay, number four. This is quite a long one because there's a lot of aspects I need to introduce you to. So a to the power of a half is equal to the square root of a. So once again, to put that into um, number form, if you did 2 to the power of a half, that is equal to the square root of 2. So as you'd expect, a to the power of a third is equal to the cube root of a. So in general, what you get from this is that a to the power of 1 over m is equal to the so-called mth root of a, the mth root. Okay, what happens when this number here is not 1, though? What happens if we have a to the b over c, for instance? Well, we still have a to the so-called c root because that's the thing on the bottom but then we raise all of this to the power of b 
so for example if we did 3 to the power of 2 over 3 it would be 3 the cube root of 3 all of that raised to the power of 2 so the fifth law firstly a to the power of minus 1 is equal to 1 divided by a which hence is equal to 1 over a so to put that into um, a number 2 to the power of minus 1 is equal to a half um, also 2 over 3 to the power of minus 1 is equal to 1 divided by 2 over 3 which is equal to if you remember how division works in fractions you flip this around at the end so this would become 3 over 2 what happens if it wasn't 1 though? Um, what happens if we have a to the minus b? Well we still have this 1 over a but the b would go to the power of a so to put this into example 2 to the power of minus 3 is equal to 1 over 2 cubed we bring the 3 down to the denominator um, as an indice as, an, um, as a power and then obviously this would be equal to 1 over 8 as 2 to the power of 3 is equal to 8 um, I know that people really don't like it when you mix minuses and fractions together for indices. So, for example, in 4 to the power of minus 3 over 2. Well, the best way to deal with this is just to take it slowly. So, the minus would cause it to be 1 over 4. And then the denominator 2 would cause it to be the root. And then the 3 would cause you to just cube everything on the bottom. So, if you um, wanted to um, take this further, it would be 1 over over 2 cubed because the square root of 4 is just equal to 2 and then 2 cubed is just equal to 8 so 1 over 8. Um, a question I had um, for indices law which I didn't really understand at the start was that the square root of 4 is equal to plus or minus 2 because the square of minus 2 is also equal to 4. This is a theme that you see a lot in A level maths. Um, in chapter one in the indices law don't worry about this don't worry about it equaling plus or minus two for the indices law just note that the square root of four is equal to two don't worry about the minuses and the sixth law is the easiest one a to the power of zero is equal to one any number to the power of zero is equal to one um, really quick, something very common that they throw in exams is a question like this. 25 squared over uh, 5 squared, let's say. Now, at first you're going to look at this and think that you can't apply any indices law to it because the bases aren't the same. However, 25 is 5 squared. You can apply an indices law to the top because it, you've got 5 to the power of 2 to the power of 2. So that'd be 2 times 2, so it'd be 5 to the power of 4. And then you can apply an indices law to that by doing the 4 minus 2 because it's division to do 5 to the power of 2. So remember the relationships between uh, square numbers and their roots um, because, some, because it's very common that they can throw this at you um, and it can catch students off guard with the fact that the bases aren't the same but you can still work the indices law with them okay here are a couple of um questions related to indices so i would suggest pause the video have a go at them and then come back and i'll do the answers <laughs> okay so for the first one um the first thing you're going to need to do is you're going to need to simplify um the bit that's inside the bracket so that is going to become x to the power of 2 minus a half and then all of that to the power of 2 over 3 which you can then simplify 2 minus a half um, is equal to x to the 3 over 2 2 over 3 if you don't know how I got that um, make the fraction 4 over 2 and then that will make it a lot easier because the denominator is um, common and then for this you have to do 3 over 2 times 2 over 3 and these are reciprocals of each other they're basically each other flipped over and as you can see these two are actually going to cancel out to make the answer just x so that's the final answer and um, for question 2 
Um, this is an old spec question, um, but it's the, um, all the content is in the new spec as well. Um, this is what I was talking about earlier. It's very common in exams about how um, the relationship between square numbers and their um, and their kind of um, original number. So nine to the three x plus one. We want it in the form where three is the base. So it seems quite obvious that we're going to want to do this to the three to the power of two. And then put all of that to the 3x plus 1. And then we use the indices, indices law and times these together. Let's do 3, 2, 3x plus 1. And then this is just going to be 3, 6x plus 2. So y is going to equal 6s plus 2 if you want to be more specific. And that's the final answer.